My mom has spent her whole life protecting us kids. Being a good mom is very important to me and a good wife. Honestly, Lori and Charles looked like they had the ideal marriage, but her beliefs had become a lot more extreme. After she met Chad Daybell, she changed. Who the hell is Chad Daybell? Well, we're about to answer that question because that was the trailer for the Netflix docuseries, Sins of Our Mother. It chronicles one of the most bizarre cases I've ever come across. I mean, it involves sex, money, power, and murder. But wait, there's even more. We've also got doomsday prepping, dark spirits, and zombies. Yes, I did say zombies. Frankly, it all sounds like complete and utter fiction, but sadly, it's all too real. This is Chad Daybell. Opening statements in his triple murder trial started today in Boise, Idaho. He is charged with killing his first wife and two stepchildren. So how did we get here? Well, he met a woman named Lori Vallow at a religious conference back in 2018. Both Daybell and Vallow were married to different people at the time. Now here's where it starts to get, well, really bizarre. Prosecutors say that Daybell became obsessed with Vallow. They allegedly had an affair and that Daybell's then wife, along with Vallow's two children, were quote unquote obstacles that stood in their way. The prosecution says that this is what happened next. Two dead children buried in the defendant Chad Daybell's backyard in September of 2019. The next month, his wife is found dead in their marital bed. 17 days after the death of his wife, Tammy Daybell, this defendant is photographed laughing and dancing on a beach in Hawaii at his wedding. It's Lori Vallow. Now, the state says those killings were no accident and that Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow justified the murders with extreme doomsday religious beliefs. Any who oppose them or label sometimes as dark spirits or even zombies. This narrative gave them the pretext to remove people from this world for their own good. As for Daybell's defense, well, his attorney claims that he was manipulated by Vallow. Lori Vallow comes in the picture, Miss Texas, with her testimony about this beautiful, vivacious woman, very sexual person, and very manipulative. And she knows how to get what she wants. And she drew, drew Chad Daybell into a relationship. Now, to make it even more complicated, the defense is pointing the finger at Vallow's brother, who they say had a history of violence. Now, Lori Vallow was convicted last year of the murder of her children and of conspiring to kill Daybell's wife. She got life in prison without parole. Chad Daybell, well, he could face the death penalty if he is convicted. Joining me now is Sky Boardman, and she is the director of Sins of Our Mother and knows this case very well. Sky, thank you so much for joining. Just trying to wrap my mind around all the different ins and outs of these cases and the people who are involved is really just mind boggling and, and bizarre. And you've been following this case for a very long time. We have now finally come to the day of, of Chad Daybell's trial. Can you help me understand what were your biggest takeaways today from the opening statements? Well, I think for a long time, we've been thinking, what is Chad's defense going to do? And I think it was answered today that they're really looking at pinning the blame on Lori and her brother, Alex Cox, and really saying that Chad was taken in by this woman, was taken in by this woman and her brother, and it was it was the two of them that were really behind these, these three horrible murders that happened. And I think based on the opening statements today, that's that's definitely how it's going to play out. I mean, Daybell was connected to a movement of religious doomsday preppers. I mean, what exactly did he believe, Sky? And, and how do prosecutors think that those beliefs are connected to the deaths of his former wife and, and also the Vallow children? So from what I understand about his beliefs is that he and, and eventually Lori would rate people on a scale of darkness to lightness. And if somebody was a dark spirit and they were high on the scale of darkness above 
I think the number was something like 2.5, then they could never come back to being white. And that person then would become kind of not of this world anymore. And they needed to, to rid this world of this person, of this dark white person. If somebody was in the light scale above a 2.5, that person would always be light. And Chad and Lori were both very high on this darkness and lightness scale. What's interesting about the scale that they went by is people changed all the time. We saw a number of different pieces of paper, slips of paper that just had these numbers sort of typed out on them. And sometimes people were dark and sometimes they were light. So I don't know that there was any real method to figuring out who was dark or light. I think it was more sort of an emotional thing for both of them to kind of put these people on this dark and light list. And were the Vallow children somehow assigned these numbers? Some on some lists, yes, and on some lists, no. So that's why I think it, it, it's it's a little bit hard to tell what the what the rationale was for for these lists and how these lists were created. But there were definitely times where where both of them were on the list. I mean, Sky, what is your sense of how Daybell's attorneys are going to construct his defense? He essentially is saying it's not me; it's it's Lori. I was taken in. I was manipulated. I think it's their best hope, honestly. I It's very different from, from what Lori's trial was like. I mean, she did not essentially sort of go after Chad. Her defense didn't go after Chad. And so I think really they are looking at their best case scenario and that if they can blame Lori and if they can blame her brother Alex for sort of seducing Chad into these behaviors, that they are the ones that brought this religion into his life, then I think that's that's their best shot. You know, Alex Cox, you mentioned, who officials say shot and killed Lori's former husband, Charles, in 2019. He might factor into this as well? Well, it's difficult with, with Alex because Alex passed away in December of 2019. And funnily enough, when he passed away, it was the day after Tammy's body had been exhumed and they were looking at Tammy's body to find the cause of death. And then he passes away from blood clots in his lungs. And it wasn't ruled a mysterious death at the time, but when you sort of go back and in hindsight kind of look at it, it seems so bizarre. The timing of it is, is very strange. His wife at the time even said the night before that he died, he said, I think they're gonna make me their fall guy. And I think that's honestly what Chad's defense is trying to do. I mean, your Netflix miniseries, Sins of Our Mother, I mean, it debuted on Netflix back in, I think, 2022. A lot has happened, obviously, since then, including, as you mentioned, Lori's conviction. I wonder, has your perspective, Sky, on this changed at all since making that documentary? It hasn't actually changed that much. We, we had most of the information, I mean, everything that is in the doc, we'd sort of gotten throughout the course of making the documentary. I, I know when I was sort of following Lori's trial, there were a few a few more instances of information about really more about the, the children and how their bodies had been found and, and how the remains were found that that we didn't know about. And, and Tammy's autopsy results weren't released at the time where we were making the film. But for the most part, the information that came out in the trial and in the time leading up to the trial and after the trial is, is we knew most of it. So um, there were certainly revelations, but I feel like I feel like we've got a pretty good sense of how this is going to play out. Well, I have been riveted by not only the documentary, but also now that this trial has begun. Sky Borgman, thank you so much.